the prisoner is charged with being a traitor to our lord the king by reason of his having assisted the French king Louis. Your lordship, I will prove to this court that this man, Charles Darnay, is a contemptible spy. The prisoner has been passing and repassing from France to England on secret business of which he can give no good account. Stepney! Good God, man, there's a trial going on here. Get out of yourself. Lord Knight, sorry. I have witnesses in this courtroom today who saw the prisoner on a trip from France nine months ago. It is my information that they saw the prisoner confer with fellow conspirators on a packet out of Le Havre. I propose to call one of these witnesses at this time. Dr. Manette. Dr. Manette, can you identify the prisoner as your fellow traveller returning from France? Unfortunately, I was recovering from a long illness at the time. My mind was a blank, you see, for a long period. And I can only thank a gracious God now for restoring my faculties once again. Once again, can you identify the prisoner? No. Were you travelling alone? I was accompanied by Mr. Jarvis Laurie and my daughter. Thank you. I now call Miss Lucy Manette. What a beauty we have here. You have looked upon the prisoner. Yes. Speak up, please. I have. Did you not see this man confer with two other men aboard the packet when you return from France? I... Speak up, please. We cannot hear you. Yes. I saw him. And were there not papers passed between these men that night? I saw papers. I could not hear what was said. Mr. Darnay told the me... The prisoner. The prisoner. Yes. He was very kind to me and to my father. Very considerate. I do hope that nothing I say here today will repay him by doing him any harm. Oh, you may not wish to uh, testify against the prisoner, Miss Manette, but be that as it may, is this the man you saw? Speak up! Yes. Thank you very much. I will now call upon Mr. John Barsan. <laughs> I saw the prisoner with my own eyes. I watched him as he passed on secret information to two French gentlemen on three different occasions. You are absolutely certain that it was the prisoner here, Charles Darnay, who passed on this vital and important government information about our military strength to these, these spies. I am, sir. Well, at the defense will question the witness. You may proceed. Now, this information that you say you saw passed on, did you actually read it? Yes, sir. But I didn't study on it. Marked secret, you know. How much did you receive to give this evidence today? Nothing. Nothing at all to lay a trap for this prisoner? No. You swear to that? I do. My lad, I have no further questions of this witness. Oh, just one moment, my lad, if I may. Uh, if I may, sir. I do have just one more question. 
Tell this court that you're absolutely certain in your identification of this prisoner. Yes, sir. Have you ever seen anyone who looked like the prisoner? Not so much as I'd be mistaken. I ask you then to look upon my learned colleague here, Mr. Sidney Cotton. Stand stand, stand. Would you lay aside your wig, sir? Are they not very much like each other? Look closely, sir. Well, yes, there's a certain similarity. Speak up, sir. Do you remain certain in your identification? No. Uh, louder, please, sir. I don't believe the court heard your answer. No. No! You can no longer identify the prisoner as the man you saw. Correct? It could have been someone else. Correct? Correct. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions of this patriotic witness. <laughs> The jury reached the verdict. We have, my lord. We find the prisoner, Charles Darnay, innocent of all charges. Every single day. Mr. Darnay, I'm happy to have brought you up with honor. Indeed, sir. You have saved my life. Thank you, sir. I did my best. My congratulations, sir, upon your vindication. And you have my regret, good doctor, that I brought you and your lovely daughter into this. Thank you, doctor. Mm. Well, come along, my dear. Good fortune to you, sir. It's a strange chance, wouldn't you say? I beg your pardon? That you and I, two look-alikes, should be thrown together on such an occasion. Frankly, I don't see all that much resemblance, but uh, I hardly feel part of this world again as yet. Yes, it's just a few moments ago that you were pretty far advanced on your way to another. Come. Let me show you to the nearest tavern. Oh, do come along, Mr. Darnay. I've done nothing but dream of a good wine while these numbskulls were deliberating which world you should belong to. 